tame, sharp edge, not only for the high class tournament professional, but up to now for the ambitious hobby player too. Hmm. Hi. I'm not so sure what's so tame about these strings because if you're ever strung with the wise cannon blue rock and roll power, it's anything but tame. In this video, I plan to show you how I'll tame these super sharp shape strings with a string weaving tool. All right, let's get into it. All right, so before we get into it, I wanted to give you some information what inspired the creation of this video. First, let me tell you about this string. A customer brought these in. It's a packaged hybrid where the mains are square and the crosses are round. The racket was a Wilson Steam 99S and he wanted it strung at 60 pounds. This is the first time I strung with these strings and my first impression was how sharp the edges were on the mains. Then how challenging it was to avoid notching of the mains as I pulled the crosses through. Although I used a half-half technique during the installation of the crosses, I still left some small notches in the mains. And I did my best to install these strings as carefully as I could. Now here's the second part, enter the string weaver. About two weeks ago, Dennis Sadowski, a colleague at IRT, contacted me about his string weaver device. Dennis admitted he's an amateur stringer, but a professional engineer that invented the string weaver to make weaving crosses easier. I heard about the string weaver about five years ago, but never thought it would be a useful tool for me. So I want to thank Dennis for sending this string weaver so I can test it out. Now fast forward to today. Here's the perfect super sharp shape string and the perfect string weaving tool. It's the Wise Cannon Blue Rock and Roll Power and the String Weaver. All right, so as I'm finishing the last main, I did want to mention how sharp the edges were. Actually, I did earlier, but there, it's a, literally a square string. And um, even as you put it through the Diablo right here, I typically would wind it around and run it through my fingers. I had to be really careful. I wanted to make sure that I didn't cut my fingers because it almost feels like razor sharp. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out before I come back to you on the crosses. Now that I completed the mains, I'm going to start the crosses, but let me talk about this string weaver. So basically the design, it's a, it's a comb and it fits right onto the string bed and it has a bunch of teeth on, um, on both sides, but on this side, it has a lever that, uh, either raises or lowers the string as you move the lever back and forth. So what you first have to do is lock it into place and you center it on the string bed. So I'll go ahead and install that right here. And once you get it in there, there's a locking feature. So you have to make sure it's locked into place. And by moving this lever either forward or backwards, you'll notice that the strings will move up or down. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and install the crosses starting with the second cross. Uh, like I normally do, and I have the strings raised and lower uh, appropriately, so it slides right through there. In fact, sometimes I had trouble weaving because it was so easy. Uh, it would slip out of my hand, so it's almost like stringing a staggered uh, pattern where you have that easy weave. So what I'm going to do is now come back to the first cross and then just flip this handle over because I want to make sure that the strings are now raised and lower the opposite direction since I just finished that uh, string and I'll go ahead and weave this one and if you're wondering why I'm doing the second cross and then coming back to the first I've done an, I did another video where I'll leave the link below uh, where you can check that out all right so I am going to use a starting clamp on the outside of the frame to secure that in place and now tension the first cross but you notice that I didn't leave a, a large enough loop to reach the tension head. So what I want to do is make this loop larger, but because this uh, string weaver is now set for this string and I want to pull the second string, I have to come back and flip this over this way just to make sure that I can pull it easily. Because I'm using the string weaver, I want to maximize the use of it. So anytime I can reduce the friction like this, it's uh, definitely going to be helpful. So I'll go ahead and uh, tension this. And then 
I'll go ahead and pull this string through really easily. So earlier I mentioned that when I strung these, uh, when I strung this particular string, I had to use the half-half technique and even that was uh, uh, problematic because I would still get some friction and did leave some small notches in the string. All right, so what I'm gonna explain is the, um, the procedure when using the string weaver, at least how I uh, figured it out, is that you have to flip this back and forth three times for every cross string. In the manual, it says you can only you, you only have to do it once, which makes sense. But at least with the technique that I use, I, I found myself flipping it over three times. So uh, I'll show you that. I'm gonna start the uh, fourth cross here. And uh, again, I'm using a one head technique, but I need to make sure that, uh, okay, I'll start with the, this in the proper position. So within the proper position, I can just slide this right through here hardly even weaving, just kind of pulling this uh, loop end right through. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this through. I wanna make sure I leave enough of a loop so it reaches the tension head. But now because I'm tensioning this string, I need to flip this lever over here. So that's one flip. Okay, now I, got, I have to move this lever over again because now I want to pull this string through. That's the second flip. Okay, but now I'm weaving the next string so I have to flip this over again. So yeah, there's hardly any friction right there. It's just sliding right through there. So I'll go ahead and finish this racket till I reach uh, towards the end of the racket. I'm just following the three flips and uh, I'll, uh, we'll talk about the end. All right, so I'm down to the last two crosses and I removed the string weaver. What I found is when I get to the last two, that's when it gets really tight. Uh, it does mention in the manual that you can string behind it, but uh, I found it easier just to remove the string weaver. So what I'm gonna do is uh, at this point is use the half-half technique. I mentioned that's what I had to do on the previous racket that I strung when I didn't have the string weaver. So basically I'm just gonna weave half of it through, uh, pull it at an angle, and um, and then we the other half through this way. So this is on another video if you wanna check it out and I'll leave the link below. Uh, you can use this technique when you uh, work with natural gut or textured polyester uh, like this or shaped polyester like this. So you're just gonna pull it through like that. At this point, I don't have enough of a string length to leave a loop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tension it. And I have one more cross string left. And on this one, I'm just gonna use the stitching technique because again, I don't have much string left. So, and this is the easiest way to reduce any kind of friction. So I pull the entire string length through and I have just enough to reach the tension edge. So this is an ideal length. So basically I'm just gonna loop it through and just kind of stitch it like this and just get it through on this last cross. So. Yeah, for this string, I think it's necessary to use this technique because of the fact that it's so textured. It's a good thing that I'm using an open string pattern because if this was a tight string pattern, it would be really tough down there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, tie this off and then give you my final thoughts. Well, there's no small notches in this string job thanks to the string weaver. And if there was any taming, it was a string weaver that made these strings more manageable. And if you wanna get more information about the string weaver, go to stringweavers.com. And I wanna thank Dennis again for introducing me to this useful tool. Thanks for watching, happy stringing, and let your strings play.